I said with penetrating injury, there's some exceptions and things you want to know. So, you know, really it's kind of what we talked about. The right ventricle, you know, you're going to have your sternum. Your sternum is going to be running right about here. Okay, so if you have a penetrating injury that's right outside the sternum, maybe it's like right around here, it's very likely it's going to affect the right ventricle. Now remember, you know, to, to really clarify this, you should know some of these intercostal spaces. Remember, every intercostal space is going to be numbered for the rib above it. So here's your first rib. So this is going to be your first intercostal space, second rib, second intercostal space third rib, third intercostal space, then we have four and we have five. So the third and the fourth intercostal space are gonna be primarily right ventricle areas, okay? So these are areas where if you had a penetrating injury and it was just outside of the sternum, you might hit right ventricle. Or even if it went through the sternum, it would be most likely that you would have a right ventricle involvement. Okay, so mid to left sternal border, third, fourth intercostal space, that's gonna be primarily going to be right ventricle okay so that's primarily right ventricle on the other hand if you had a penetrating injury but let's say that the penetrating injury was further out maybe it was fifth intercostal space okay so maybe kind of in this region out here outside of the sternum that would be more classic for left ventricle involvement but it gets a little tricky let me just backtrack and kind of explain this to you so Remember, the point of maximal impulse, where is this located? Right? We learned this probably first year. This is going to be in the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. Usually that's where you feel it. So you can put your hand on the patient's fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line, and you can usually feel this point of maximal impulse. And this is because the cardiac apex is in this location. Remember, this is from left ventricle. That's kind of how I remember fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. That's the PMI. That's left ventricle. So if I, if I had a stab wound or penetrating injury at that location, it's probably going to affect left ventricle. Realistically, the midclavicular line is about here. You can see that the lung is pretty much kind of covering up a lot of this area. So if I had a penetrating stab wound, it would probably affect the left lung, especially if it was lateral to the midclavicular line. It would mostly, if only, affecting the left lung. But if it was a more medial injury, it might affect both or perhaps just the left ventricle, as there's a small region there where the lung doesn't completely overlap with it. Okay, but the reason the reason I bring this up is because these are the two locations that get kind of tricky that you want to be familiar with. Again, anteriorly directed right ventricle is going to be more of third and fourth intercostal space, very close to the sternal border. As you start to go down to the fifth intercostal space, now you're thinking more of a left ventricle injury if there's a cardiac injury. But also remember that as you start to move more laterally, you're more likely to get lung involvement. And again, that would present more similarly to like a pneumothorax, for example.